Welcome everyone to our talk today with Christian Zara, Management Specialist and Visitor Experience Program Manager at Weir Farm National Historical Park. Ms. Lazar's presentation will take place from 5 to 6 p.m. today, just prior to the artist reception for Bobby Icamon's exhibition, We're Inspired, We're Inspired, which will run from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Through a beautifully slide illustrated presentation, Ms. Lazar will talk about the inspiring beauty and history of Weir Farm National Historical Park, a national and regional cultural gem which sits on the Wilton Beachfield Line. She will chronicle the artists who have lived at Weir Farm over the years, describe how Weir Farm became a part of the National Park Service, discuss current arts programming, and talk about various opportunities to get involved. She has been with the Park Service since 2008 and has been with Weir Farm since 2011. She will also explore ways like, in which contemporary artists like Bobby Ivan Moore uses the park as a source of inspiration and creativity. Mullen's work is very much inspired by Weir Farm, where she has been a professional art instructor for, you know, for 12 years. An award-winning and established New England painter, Ms. Mullen's artwork is in private collections throughout the U.S., France, England, and is also included in the New York Digest book collection. Without further ado, we please welcome our speaker, Chris Mazzar. Uh, 
Um, in 1873, he left to train uh, in Europe, so he went to the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, the Paris School, School of Fine Arts, and he studied there and trained in the academic style. After finishing his formal art training in the late 1870s, Weir moved to New York City to start his career as an artist. He made a living set, uh, painting portraits and teaching art classes, and met his future wife, Anna Dwight Baker. She was a student in one of his classes. Um, so they fell madly in love and were quickly engaged. Uh, before they married, Weir purchased the farm in Branchville, Connecticut, now Weir Farm, and that would become a summer home for he, Anna, and their future children. So a few of Weir's more early works and academic style paintings. Here's a view of the Hudson River in 1870. And at the water trough. 1876 or 1877. So these might be different than the paintings that those of you are familiar with Weir's work are used to seeing. After he purchased the Branchville farm in 1882, he started to move away from traditional styles and explore painting on plein air or outdoors. His work became less polished and reflected a brief moment in time, but his paintings always remained rooted in the classical techniques and draftsmanship and composition that he had learned throughout his life. Visits to the Connecticut countryside began to change his ideas about the art that he created. So in fact, on his first visit to Weir Farm, uh, he created this charming watercolor, Spring Landscape Branchville. Um, that's actually in the park's collection, a lovely little watercolor. Um, so this began to demonstrate a shift to a more impressionist style. So you can note that this one, compared to the others, has more loose brush strokes, it's a more intimate scene, a little bit more of a personal subject matter, and you can tell that he did capture a moment in time at Weir Farm. So he was obviously inspired and influenced by the rural landscape, and many other artists important to this new American art movement would be as well. At his summer home, far from the bustle of the city life, he found the perfect place to develop his signature impressionist style. Uh, the farm provided an inspirational setting where he and other artists explored their creative work. He always invited his friends and colleagues to come and enjoy the farm, from outdoor sketching sessions to fishing or hunting expeditions. A steady stream of visitors included students and artists, including John Twalkman, Child Hassam, John Singer Sargent, and Albert Pinkham Ryder. So here are a few of their paintings that were inspired by Weir Farm. So this is a work by Child Hassam, Weir's Garden. Albert Pinkham Ryder, Weir's Orchard. and John Henry Twachman, Branchville. Weir's relationship with Twachman uh, really inspired his shift to Impressionism, especially in media such as pastel, watercolor, and etching. Uh, by 1890, Weir's perspective had changed dramatically from early on, and he was influenced by his colleagues and the setting of the Branchville farm. He earned admiration as an artist through the support of his colleagues and students. His work with the following organizations really elevated his career in American art. Weir was the president of the National Academy of Design, board of directors on the Metropolitan Museum of Art, a founding member of the Ten American Painters, or the Ten, a painting member of the National Commission of Fine Arts, vice president of the Society of American Artists, member of the Taya Club, founding member of the Society of Painters in Pastel, and so many more that I can't even continue to list them or will be here past 45 minutes. Um, so he was very, very active and supportive of his colleagues and friends, and a very, very important figure in American art. You can find a lot of his works in museums all across the country, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, uh, where you would find his painting, The Factory Village, and also, the Red Bridge. So I'll show you a few works of art now inspired by Weir Farm. So this is the fishing party. This conveys a leisurely spirit of the summer retreat that was a moment in time at Weir Farm. Uh, he was an avid outdoorsman and constructed a large fishing pond in 1896. So the pond provided an ideal setting for fishing, boating, swimming, picnics, painting, 
And here you can see people on their way to Kant. Bottom, um, this 1906 painting uh, shows the open grassy meadows and stone walls that were characteristic of the Connecticut countryside. During Weir's ownership, the land was far less forested than what you might see today if you visit, take a hike through the woods. Uh, you can see this painting on view in the Weir house. Um, so if you visit the Weir house and take a tour this summer, you'll be able to see that. It's in the dining room. Weir also was sometimes referred to as a gentleman farmer. So of course he was an artist, but he did keep the farm working at Weir Farm. Um, and it was a great source of inspiration for him, as you can see here in the England Barnyard. With Weir Farm as a backdrop, the Weir family kept busy uh, visiting, reading, gardening, uh, just enjoying their leisure time at Weir Farm, lots of creative endeavors, art making, uh, but there was a lot of time also just to relax and enjoy. Uh, in Idle Hours, which is at the museum, uh, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, um, you can see that Weir painted his oldest daughter, Caro, and she's playing the guitar next to his wife, Anna, uh, in the living room of the Weir house. All three of Weir's daughters, Caro, Dorothy, and Cora, were often models for Weir's paintings. Which brings us to uh, the second generation of artists, Dorothy Weir Young and Mahanrai Mackintosh Young. Uh, we were second daughter, Dorothy, uh, trained very closely with her father. She was a multifaceted woman. She walked in the high social circles of New York. She was a philanthropist, cultured, educated, well-traveled, and friends with great American artists of her time. She worked in traditional media of oil, watercolor, and printmaking. Beginning in the 1920s, Dorothy started writing to museums and private collectors to gather as much information about her father and his work as she could. She said in a letter to a family friend, I want this first of all for my own pleasure, but I also think it will be a very useful thing to have in years to come as a reference. And Weir Farm still uses her collection to this day, um, which is really exciting. Uh, she spent hours transcribing her father's letters that became the backbone of her book, The Life and Letters of J. Alden Weir. She also worked on several exhibits of Julian's work including a Century Association tribute in 1920, an etching show at the Metropolitan Museum in 1922, and a major retrospective of Julian's work at the Metropolitan in 1924. She first met sculptor Mahanra Young, her future husband, at the Century Association exhibit in 1920. On February 17th in 1931, Dorothy married Mahanra Young. She continued to paint, and slowly lessened her painting to time, for time to focus more on the work regarding her father. Uh, similar to Weir, Mahanrai was classically trained. So during his lengthy career, he created more than 300 sculptures, 500 oil paintings, and thousands of drawings. He's most recognized for his sculpture. Mahanrai spent decades at Weir Farm creating commissioned and personal works in the studio that he had built after he and Dorothy married. A grandson of Brigham Young, the famed Mormon leader, Mahanrai received several commissions from the Mormon church. So here's a few works by Dorothy Weir Young. So her work reflects her father's impressionist influence, but she preferred to create still life portraits and more intimate scenes. She especially loved linoleum block printing. seen here, and the park owns many of her wood blocks and prints and all sorts of wonderful things. <coughs> At the age of 63, Mahan Rai Young received a commission to create a monument commemorating the pioneers who settled in the Salt Lake Valley in the mid-1800s. This is the place, which you can see here, was dedicated on July 24, 1947, the centennial of the Mormon settlement. Today you can view original plaster casts from portions of the monument in the studio where he created it at Weir Farm. So uh, that's a close up of part of the sculpture um, from the This is the Place monument and then that's the mirroring plaster cast that you can see on the visit to the young studio. And I see a few of our wonderful volunteers in the audience who give great tours of the young studio. You'll have to come and check it out if you haven't had the opportunity. 
So he was also inspired to capture the beauty of Weir Farm through paintings and drawings and etchings as well. So this etching, Joe Naki builds a stone wall, shows the, the local stonemason Joe Naki building what Mahanrai dubbed the Great Wall of Kora, a project that was commissioned by Weir's youngest daughter in 1931 for a large dry stone wall that surrounded her portion of Weir Farm's property. Following Dorothy Weir Young and Mahanra Young, the Andrews family continued the legacy of artists working at the farm. Sperry Andrews and Doris Bass met while sharing an easel at the Art Student League in New York City. Sperry preferred working in oils and Doris with watercolor. After attending the centennial exhibit of J. Alden Weir's work, the Andrews visited the Branchville farm and they met Mahanra Young. They became fast friends and they spent hours and hours together in the studio. After Young passed away in 1957, the couple purchased a portion of the farm, and the Andrews understood really what Weir Farm meant, not only to the families that had lived, loved, and created there, but also the importance of the cultural landscape and the continuation of that artistic tradition started by J. Elton Weir all those years ago. Although Doris stressed the importance of Weir Farm, there were many people who did not and regarded the property as prime land for new housing developments. In her lifetime, she saw many of these developments spring up around the borders of Weir Farm and was concerned that Weir Farm would soon fall victim to that as well. So she was prompted to act. Along with Cora Weir Burlingham, her next door neighbor and Weir's youngest daughter, uh, Doris organized a group, the Citizens to Preserve Weir Farm. <coughs> She took to her typewriter and wrote letter after letter to lawmakers, artists, art historians, and land use groups, heralding the importance of saving a site with such great historical significance. Letters of support from major art institutions came rolling in. And here you can see a couple of the buttons that Julian Weir lives and the Save the Farm. Those were created by the citizens to preserve Weir Farm as part of their campaign to foster support for preserving that very special place. So all of these efforts paid off, and on October 31st, 1990, Congress established Weir Farm National Historic Site as a unit of the National Park Service. Yay! <laughs> a combination of the passion and determination of Cora and the Andrews and have helped to preserve this landscape now for future generations of the National Park. So very exciting. Doris and Sperry ended up living out the rest of their years in the house, observing all the daily visitors that would come and enjoy the site that they worked so tirelessly to preserve. Sperry was a very prolific artist. He created thousands of paintings in varied styles. Um, so I really love to flip through his work uh, and see just how different his styles can be. He worked a lot in the Young Studio, um, so if you visit the park, you'll get to see a little bit of, learn a little bit more about him in the Young Studio, and then we're on a tour of the house. We also have uh, some of his original artwork up as well. And then we're switching to Doris here. Um, so Doris's main focus while she was a resident at Weir Farm was the preservation and her family, but she did still take time for herself to paint. Artists and inspired as well. Uh, she mostly worked in watercolors. A couple of Doris watercolors here. In the Weir Studio. A lot of their works are untitled. So today the National Park Service continues this tradition and manages the property, offering art programs, and artists and visitors keep that story going. So this is a tradition that's remained unbroken. Um, there have been artists living at and working at Weir Farm since 1882. So there's a, some great pictures here of people enjoying creating art in the park. We often get plein air painters that just bring their easels and set up in the park. Uh, we do also offer our own free to use art supplies. Through the Artist in Residence program, we continue the artistic tradition. So each year the park um, welcomes several artists for typically a four-week residency. Uh, we work in partnership with the Weir Farm Art Alliance, one of our two, um, two great partners that helps us put on programs and promote the park. And uh, currently we do have an artist in residence. She's wonderful. Uh, you can learn more about all the different artists and see some examples of 
uh, their past work on the Weir Farm Art Alliance website. Um, you can see here, uh, this is inside the artist's studio. So the artists live in the caretaker's house, um, which was the home of the caretakers of the farm. Um, it's a lovely little cottage, fully furnished. It's a great experience. They, they get the time to really get away from um, you know, their daily life and be inspired and just be in that weird farm setting and really soak it all in. So it's always inspiring to see what they come up with when they're at the park. Uh, we also continue the artistic tradition through the Take Part in Art program, which I mentioned is our free to use supplies. So I brought examples in case anybody wants to see them later. Um, we offer sketching kits of watercolors or pastels during the week, anytime the visitor center is open. Uh, you can see there's a table, uh, that bottom right hand picture, that's with our watercolor kits. Um, so we put those out Wednesday through Sunday from 10 to 4. We have art supplies. On the weekends, it's these lovely watercolor kits. Everything you would need to create a painting. Um, and no pressure. You can just come grab a kit, find a nice spot, relax, and make art in the park. Um, as you can see here, uh, Bobby also provides instruction. So every other Sunday, um, we have informal instruction with Bobby Ike Mullen. So she sets up her easel, puts out her sign, and if you want instruction, you want some tips, you can come find her and she can give you lessons on the spot. It's a little less intimidating than a formal class and uh, a really wonderful experience. So I, I don't know how many years I've been doing that, Bobby. Twelve? Twelve. Twelve years. So it's a really wonderful program. We see a lot of great art and we don't see a lot of great art too. Like people bring it home, we never see it, but we know that they had a wonderful experience and that's really what's important. So we also have an art in the park contest. So if you did create a work of art at the park, um, you could submit that to the contest. Other art programs at Weir Farm, there are many, including uh, impressionist painting workshops with Dimitri Wright. Uh, those are very popular one or two day workshops where people come, we have night painting. Um, so people can come and enjoy the night painting or a daytime workshop. Um, we have workshops for youth, teens, adults, beginners, advanced artists. Um, so that's definitely one way that we continue the artistic tradition through formal classes. Recently, uh, one of our park rangers created a video series of the Impressionist Painting Workshops with Dimitri. So we took what he teaches in the class at Weir Farm and made short videos um, so you can follow along a little bit if you can't have the experience in the park for yourself or you just wanted to enjoy listening to Dimitri talk. Um, they're wonderful videos and they're on the park website along with other virtual tours and things like that. So it's a really great experience. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to come paint at Weir Farm, I would highly recommend it. I mentioned art in the park. These are pictures from the past Art in the Park Festival. Uh, so we have an Art in the Park contest every year. The last two years of the contest has been virtual. So anybody can submit a work of art from, we have a junior category for youth, we have a teen category, a photography category, beginner, adult, and then advanced or professional artist category um, for those that are, uh, you know, more, have more of the professional equipment. Um, you can see some of the past winners here holding up their awards, um, and we do demonstrations and open up the house, and it's a really lovely day. Uh, we're planning to do an Art in the Park Festival this October, and uh, we're taking submissions for the contest virtually through September. So those folks that do end up getting selected as a winner of the competition will bring their artwork on view at that con at the, uh, festival in October. So. Stay tuned for that, it's very exciting. Uh, we also have lots of exhibits. Um, so here you'll see our newest landscape exhibit um, called Art Bears, if you haven't heard about it yet, I'd be surprised because it's so awesome, everybody's talking about it. Um, the Friends of Weir Farm uh, received a grant and worked really, really hard to coordinate with eight the historic paintings are through this, the landscape. So we have dozens, if not hundreds, of historic painting sites throughout the park where we know we are created this painting right here. Um, so here is, for example, the palace car, a historic photo of Weir's portable studio on the left, and then on the right, Weir's palace car, the painting 
Um, and that scene you can walk into today at Weir Farm. So it's still inspiring modern day artists. We had a reproduction of the Palace Car Maid, and um, this is actually another painting that's on one of the art fairs as well um, by Tiffany Johnson, an artist in residence. So the setting just continues to inspire people in different ways. And it's really exciting to see the same scene painted by 10, 20 different artists and, and see that variety. Um, the historic painting sites, um, we have a brochure that helps guide you through the park, has a map with numbers on it that correlate to where the paintings are in the landscape. So you can take a self-guided tour and walk through um, the landscape and walk in the footsteps of those artists and see some of those painting sites for yourself. There's 36 in the painting sites guide, but there's so many more painting sites in the park. Uh, but it's not just art, there's something for everyone at Weir Farm. So here's a map of the park. Um, we've got all these wonderful historic buildings, historic gardens, stone walls, meadows, all sorts of different habitats, wildlife, Weir Pond, local trails. Um, so I would invite you to come to Weir Farm to enjoy not just creating art, but doing <laughs> other things as well. Um, so we've got lovely hiking trails I mentioned. The Weir Preserve borders the park, as does the Nod Hill Refuge. So if you come for a hike, you can explore you know, nearly 200 acres of green space. Um, we also have uh, the Weir Pond and historic gardens, which are lovely in bloom right now, if you haven't been by lately. And, of course, natural resources are very important in, to us in the park. We have a few natural resource programs coming up, including a bio blitz, which is in partnership with the Woodcock Nature Center and the Richfield Conservation Commission on June 11th, where we're going to be rolling over logs and identifying all these different species um, and taking some surveys and having the public come and help as citizen scientists to help us figure out, like, what are all of, the, all of those creatures that are in the park. So it'll be a fun educational opportunity to learn more about the natural resources of Weir Farm. Um, we also do many other types of public programs. We do a lot of wellness programming. So Weir Farm is also a place where you can come for relaxation and wellness, get outside and hike on your own. I see people come and meditate in the gardens or um, in the back meadows once in a while. But we also offer programs as well. Uh, so we have our yoga in the garden every Friday, starting tomorrow if it doesn't rain, and um, that will go through September. We also work with uh, partners to offer art therapy for groups and uh, in art therapeutic art making for the public, um, which will be happening in September. So um, a lot of wonderful opportunities to engage with art. Um, there's also ranger guided tours where you can learn about the history and the different stories associated with all the people of Weir Farm, not just the artists. Well, we have several special programs scheduled throughout the season. Um, and of course, we love our dogs at Weir Farm, so there's the bark ranger. We have to include the bark ranger. Um, so if you have, a, a, have a, a furry friend, we love to see them at Weir Farm. We can put out a water bowl that says bark ranger. Um, so. I always love to see them. They can't come inside, but we love to see them in the park. Um, yeah, so there's so many wonderful things to do. Um, I could go on and on and on, but I would just suggest you sign up for our mailing list. There's a, 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 a sheet outside. If you put your email down, we send an e-flyer out about once a month with the upcoming month's programs. There's always something fun and exciting and something new to experience at your farm. We also do a lot of youth programming, so uh, here you'll see some scout groups uh, taking the Junior Ranger Pledge. We have a Junior Ranger program, which we do not age discriminate. You can be a Junior Ranger at any age. Uh, there's four fun programs right now, including one about the Art Bear exhibit, where you can go on a scavenger hunt to find all the art bears and learn some fun facts about bears. Um, we get hundreds of school children every year. Um, so we have a school group almost every day for the month of May for educational field trips and we work with teachers to develop curriculum based programs and provide a really wonderful opportunity for children to experience their local national park and learn about their local history. Um, let's see, There's also an online junior ranger program and uh, one of our wonderful park rangers leads the junior ranger pledge so if you happen to miss us 
you can still do the Junior Ranger program on your own and take the pledge from home. It's very fun. We also have a wonderful youth internship program at Weir Farm. So uh, we have had typically one or two interns each season working with our curatorial staff or our, our education staff our visitor service staff, our maintenance staff, doing all sorts of wonderful things. We also partner with Groundwork Bridgeport and Mather High School to bring youth from New York City or Bridgeport to come in and help us with special projects and learn more about their national parks. And we get a lot of, we do a lot of trail restoration with youth, a lot of invasive plant management with youth, and they come and provide service to the park and then also learn about the park and create art with us, which is wonderful. And of course, what would a national park be without historic preservation? Um, so we have a wonderful historic preservation program at Weir Farm. I'm sure if you visit it, you think, oh, wow, everything just looks so wonderful. That doesn't just happen. <laughs> so um, we have a, an exceptional staff that um, maintains the buildings, stone walls. Um, we have a huge art collection. So our collections manager helps maintain the art collections archives, artifacts associated with Weir Farm. Um, so you can see here we've got some park rangers that actually came from another park to help rebuild some stone walls, uh, the collections and the inside, the interior of the house, and the Weir and Young Studios. So we've got many, many historic buildings and lots to take care of, and historic preservation is, is one of our number one priorities. So there's so much to see and do. Um, I hope that you all want to come and take advantage of our free programming. Everything, all of the programs I've been speaking about are free to the public. Um, so I do hope that you'll uh, maybe learn some, something new you didn't know today or some experience you might want to have at Weir Farm in the future. Grounds are open year-round, um, and we offer programs, and the buildings are open May through October. Typically Wednesday through Sunday is when we have our programming, when all the buildings are open. But the grounds are open year-round. So please come and enjoy your local national park. All right, so you can also be, learn more about what's going on on the park website. So um, if you visit www.nps.gov slash WEFA, um, the park website has wonderful virtual tours, art galleries, um, exhibits, online exhibits, current information about hours of programs, there's like an event calendar, you can see what's going on, and uh, also, like I mentioned, those virtual art classes, which have been very popular as well. So definitely check out the park website and keep in touch with us if you'd like. You could also get involved with the park as a volunteer. Um, so we have a crew of probably 80 volunteers now. We've onboarded 40 new volunteers this season, which is very exciting. Um, lots of different opportunities to help out um, doing natural resource management, um, doing some citizen science and phenology, trail monitoring, um, maintaining the park's trails. Uh, we have our volunteers that help with the Take Part in Art program, the watercolor program, uh, for help with the historic gardens and landscape maintenance, and then also helping as a tour guide offering tours of the historic Weir and Young Studios. So if you're interested in volunteering, uh, we would love to have you as part of our team. It's a really great group of people. You may have um, found a, a Weir Farm quarter in your pocket in the last year. In 2020, Weir Farm was featured on the, the the National Park Quarter Series, you know, for the beautiful quarter. Um, so check your change. <laughs> you might find a beer farm quarter in your pocket. Um, this painting was actually inspired by the quarter, painted by Bobby Ike Mullen. So I'll flip back. You can see the artist at the easel with the beer studio. Um, we had asked Bobby to, to paint something that really represented the quarter as well as all of Weir Farm. So she incorporated elements like the Saki Garden, the Secret Garden, the Burlingham Barn, uh, the wonderful lilacs and stone walls and really made a, a wonderful painting of what um, you know what Weir Farm's all about that coincided with the quarter. We did a really fun community painting project. 
We made a giant sized one um, with some youth and neighbors and partners and volunteers that came to help paint a giant corridor painting, which was very fun. Um, so check your change. Check us out on our website. Um, I'll be around after this presentation to chat with anyone if you have any questions about our programs or Weir Farm. And um, I have some materials that we put outside and the mailing list I would encourage you all to sign up for. So um, I'd like to thank Bobby and all of the artists that visit the park for helping to continue the artistic tradition that makes Weir Farm so very special. Uh, I hope that many of you will come to Weir Farm in the future. Um, the reception here for We Are Inspired will go till 7.30, so take your time. There's lots to see, um, wonderful artwork, and a few folks from the National Park are here as well if you have more questions. So I hope you enjoy the show and that you come to We Are Farm and get We Are Inspired for yourself. Um, thanks again.